All right, guys, what is going on? Welcome to my Joseki Lecture 15. All right, so already Lecture 15. Hopefully, you guys all master of Joseki's at this point, uh, and we will uh, perfect on the approach, Kema defense. Uh, where, what we talked about last time was um, a simple defense, right, like this. And then... Uh, you know, we decide to not follow the main variation and we decide to be more of a hipster in the game of Go. So we play out a very, very stylish, uh, solid move. And then our opponent, you know, sometimes they just like, what are you doing? And then after this, uh, White will gain a small lead in the game because the shape is very solid. That's covered in the last lecture. Correct move for Black to play is to play Tiger's Mouth. Uh, and we can just capture the corner and we're hoping for black to make a very inefficient move here so that we can gain a lead but if he has watched my videos he will play a k4 because that's the correct move to play and uh, the game will keep going like this so it's an equal game uh, moving on all right that's last lecture in this lecture we will keep going with the c2 move right uh, so we talk about b3 defense uh, and today I think we will cover uh, this e3 before I cover this one uh, I need to cover a little bit what happens when white just Atari's at d2 black will connect and white will uh, capture the c2 stone and then uh, black will Atari and then capture uh, the stone at the d5 so that is uh, also a Joseki-ish variation um, so I don't really think anyone can criticize you for playing like this as white but I just wanna tell you that uh, your win rate would drop by three to four percent comparing to what you had uh, you know at the very start um, for a human player it's really hard to to tell why your win rate would drop um, by three to four uh, percent you can play like this uh, in your game uh, just to be very special just to have your style right like this is also playable for white uh, but remember white's correct follow-up is to play d6 so that's how you end the joseki so black has obviously few choices he can tanuki if he tanukis well that's beyond my control but if it decides to play the b4 by any chance, which is okay because the connection underneath is quite big, uh, white's correct move is to play a three space extension and setting up a trap for, uh, for black. So what is the trap? So if your opponent is pretty good with life and death, he will descend at c1. Uh, this will kill your corner or sort of attempt to kill your corner. Why does it kill your corner? Because check this, if white plays b1, black will honey here. You cannot play a2 because I can capture, so you have to take. Black will destroy your second eye. At this point, you'd be like, oh well, this is game over for me as white. Well, not really. You're actually having a huge advantage now because now you can uh, play the g2. You can hop out uh, and it turns out black already has fallen into a trap because as we get out we also destroy the potential site that that black has now black only has this group that is hanging there that is not alive so let's check how black can um can black struggle something out here uh this will obviously uh, not gonna work out uh, first of all uh, if you try to block lots of problems right so lots of Atari's and check what happens at the end we capture black but if black decides to extend uh, we can just keep playing this one same problem lots of cutting points black needs to keep extending and then at this point white lives in sente this is already an eye this is a second eye and there is problems going on over here right uh, so white has this to follow up uh, black's wall is not very secure it's not very strong 
Uh, so white is going to be leading in territory and the leading in uh, in speed as well, right? As we see the development over here, that's how you play out as white, and then you should be you should be very comfortable in the game. So um, black won't do this immediately, so he needs to patiently uh, expand himself, and then white can uh, go ahead and. Uh, uh, and start playing elsewhere, and that's no problem. Uh, if Black tries to kill, uh, we can uh, we can leave it there. Uh, that's fine. Uh, and uh, this is a lot, but check we have a lot of moves outside, so that will compensate uh, for uh, for the loss. So, or if you are a very um, if you care about every single group you have, you can also uh, just take, and that's no problem. Equal game moving forward, but just to warn you that your win rate would actually drop by a few percentage, which really does not matter uh, at our level. But today we're going to be introducing um, a very, I guess, a, a niche variation out of the main variation. Right? Usually you would connect here, but a lot of times you see player would extend down to e2 right this is looking for aggressive stuff black will cut here and then white obviously has no time to connect right now he needs to save the two stones uh, and uh, so first of all let's analyze right uh, what can black play here it looks like we have a lot of weak stones let's say black tries to kill white uh, white will crawl and then black extends uh, white will connect here. If you turn here, uh, the corner is dead, right? If black insists on fighting this, white will push. Black needs to extend. Can block too many cutting points. We curl once more. Still, still it's really hard to do this because um, lots of problems whoops sorry um, black extends all these are forced and then check this and then when you jump out uh, that's a classical um, way of netting something so can't block uh, this one also very dangerous right why it will cut and extend Lots of problems going on here. Needs to fix. Check. Your two stones going to be in trouble. So if you keep crawling, you probably need to crawl a lot of times, right? Like you need to uh, definitely crawl a, f a few times. Uh, and uh, in, and honestly, this is just a difficult game, right? This is a big loss already, uh, and you can't really uh, you can't really kill here because. Uh, because your corner has four liberties, right? So white can uh, basically uh, kill black in the corner, and then this still needs to live. So it looks like uh, black's corner will be killed, right? Let's say you do this. And somehow you manage to even block here. Uh, that's not a big deal. White is alive. Black is not. So this is all white's territory. Uh, that's also a great game for white. All right. We talk about why this is not going to work very briefly. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of calculations behind. Black's correct move is to Atari and then fix the corner. Right? If he does not fix... White can extend, right? Three liberty, two liberty. Uh, white is going to win, so black needs to live. And white Atari is at g3, and black connects. So um, this is probably the most important point of this lecture: is that black and Tanuki here. Right. I know I teach a lot of times that Tanuki is a great idea. This is not one of the examples. Because now white will net the two stones. And now 
Check this. Black has only the small corner and white has influence towards top, towards the right. This is not a fair trade. Even with the help of your extra stone at 03, this is not a fair trade. So black absolutely need to connect to put insecurities onto both white groups. So at this point, I just want to talk a little bit. Uh, maybe you don't feel comfortable fighting in your games, but a lot of times you really don't have a choice, right? Uh, because here we can't give up this group. Why can't we give it up? Because it's cutting both groups. So, so if we just give it up, it's kind of like turning your opponent's debt into savings immediately. So that is a huge loss, right? And just imagine your life turning your debt into savings. That's an excellent thing. You really want that. So you don't want your opponent to turn his debt into savings. So you absolutely have to drag these three stones out, no matter how difficult it is uh, to create insecurities onto both groups. A lot of values in doing that. White will push and black will jump out. So this is the exact follow up um, for both sides. Now, uh, white's correct move is to uh, actually jump out. Um, black will make the bamboo shape and then white will extend. So this is the accurate continuation. Um, and here as black, you have a nice D8 move. When white attaches, we can cap him. So then there's a lot of reading to, to do locally, right? At this point, uh, I'm presenting the most accurate variations at this point. Uh, but the reading behind it uh, might be beyond your level, but don't worry. Uh, if you think it's really complicated, um, I think just memorize it uh, for now, and then uh, that's that's going to be fine. So I'm going to go slowly. So white will pl play the tiger's mouth, and of course, uh, and of course we cannot block here, right? Because there's an Atari, so uh, we will extend. White will push here and black will push here. It looks like black is in a very, very dangerous situation, but white cannot play the cut. If white cuts, black hand Atari. Uh, so white is in trouble, right? Basically, if you play this one, I can capture the two stones. Um, so so what does what does uh so at this point if white tries to kill these three stones, we can kill the two stones. And then when white captures this, uh, black can uh, just secure everything. So that's pretty much game over for white because this amount of territory is way too much, right? And also think about the outside, black has more stones. So that's not acceptable for white. That's game over for white. So white's correct move here, the reading is very important, is to wedge here first. Black cannot do this anymore, right? Because now we can Atari when black takes, we can Atari from behind, and that's game over for black. So is this game over for black? Not really, black has an excellent tiger's mouth. Um, letting white capture the three stones, and then Black can play out a very nice move at N3 to limit any potential development that white has over here. So overall, black got this side, uh, get influence onto this side, a corner, and a very nice limiting move that expands his corner uh, and limit white. White looks very thick, it looks like he has a beautiful shape, but what is this group really going to generate for white? We're not so sure about it. Right? It's not very clear uh, what white is going to gain uh, from this thick group. Because it's all limited, right? Everywhere it's limited by black. So that's uh, that's probably an equal game moving on. Uh, that's that's the correct, very correct and accurate play by both sides. Uh, as black, you should play like this to reach an equal position. All right, so that was a very fierce uh, fighting uh, variation. Um, 
Of course, if your opponent just plays something like this, we can comfortably jump right now. Uh, now we are aiming, we're aiming at potentially pincer uh, white's group. If white plays this one, we can think about pincering white's group over here. So here we can see the value of making use of white's insecurity uh, and make play out of it. So please remember at this point, uh, do not give up your stones, right? If you give up your stones, it's a huge loss. Absolutely have to drag them out and fight, right? So even if we spend a lot of moves to secure our group over here, uh, first of all, it gets rid of white's territory over here. Uh, secondly, and most importantly, it creates insecurity for both white's groups. So both white groups need to spend moves to secure themselves. So very, very important to keep in mind because I, I see a lot of players at this point just like, oh, I give up on these two guys. I'm going to play elsewhere. Uh, that's just not um, that's just not a great idea. Need to drag them and fight. All right, so I think that's what I'm going to cover for today. Quite a lot of stuff to remember. Uh, especially, I would say this uh, idea of fighting immediately, it could be uh, quite challenging for, um, uh, for, you know, for a single Q level player, double Q level player, even low down level player, right? Like to appreciate uh, the value of insecurities uh, of your opponent's groups. Um, but I think, uh, and, you know, eventually as you play more and practice and work on it, uh, you will appreciate um, the value of insecurities, uh, the value of exploiting your oppon opponent's weaknesses. Uh, those are all very, very important ideas. Uh, so hopefully you watch more of my videos and, uh, uh, and I think eventually you'll get used to it. Uh, so uh, let's do a quick recap, I think. Um, so today we quickly covered Basically, we uh, mentioned two variations, right? One is to uh, play out this one as white. Uh, not recommended because uh, at this point, um, it is, you know, white got split into halves, but creating profits on both sides. Uh, and uh, and even if uh, white needs to spend an unmove, probably, uh, if you really love the corner here, uh, this is an equal game. Uh, you can try it out in your uh, in your games, and then uh, I think you only lost about um, three to four percentage points, so the game's still a 50-50. Uh, so what you play later will determine the win or loss. Uh, so so yeah, this is not a bad move, right? This is uh, an okay move. Um, so if someone criticizes you for that, like anywhere, uh, you can have a good refutation. Um, but but they will be right if they say, well, it's not the most optimal variation. So uh, we also covered what happens when white defends like this. We cut, white turns. Now remember to not extend because the fighting is not good for black. We double Atari and then we extend. And when white flip Atari here, um, that's a very important point in the game. Uh, we will have to connect and uh, fight way. Uh, and let me just quickly repeat the main variation. At this point, black has a very pressure variation, right? Like if you play this one, it's not really exerting max pressure on the way. Um, so very important to ex uh, exercise most uh, pressure onto your opponent, right? Very aggressive way it will make the tiger's mouth and then we push and then here white will not cut right now because it doesn't work right at this point uh, if we atari white ataris we already take the stones so white will make an interesting order here that's a correct move uh, and now we cannot connect anymore so we make the tiger's mouth white will capture the three stones and now we have the sente, and that's very important for us to limit white's potential uh, to develop on this side, right? So that would be an equal game moving on. 
Um, and I think I think this is uh, this is a great outcome for white uh, for, for black uh, because um, because his win rate starts to um, starts to go up. Uh, it was at 43 at this point, probably 47, 48. So uh, definitely nothing to worry about um, uh, as as black. Uh, this is very very playable position. All right, so uh, I guess is there, is there anything else I want to cover? Yeah, if you have any questions uh, about, uh, especially I think about dragging this group out, what are some of your concerns? Uh, you can let me know below the video. So don't forget to uh, give a like and subscribe to the channel uh, if you want to uh, get the latest uh, Joseki lecture as soon as they come out. All right, thank you very much for watching, and I will talk to you guys next time.